In this Blender video, I'm going to teach you how to create this simple scene in Blender. Now, the first thing I wanted to go ahead and say is the fact that I am doing this in Cycled Render. Um, if you have Eevee, I actually don't recommend the usage of Eevee for this particular shot because, you know, we're not running an animation, we're just doing a simple, um, a simple scene, a basically just a still, and, or a picture. And it's not necessarily to use Eevee for that, I'm not really that um, familiar with the Eevee settings, so I'm going to be using Cycles. Now, to get started, we're going to delete the default cube, like we always do, so press X and delete. Shift A brings us our add menu, so under Mesh, we're going to select a UV sphere because this is a planet. Um, the first thing we notice is the fact that it's kind of low poly. There's a lot of faces that you can easily see here, and it um, does not look that realistic. Well, let's go ahead and scale it for our first step, so S and 3, makes it a little bit bigger. And let's go ahead and give this some more geometry, or some more... Um, some more smoothness, I suppose you could say. And we could just right click and say sh shade smooth, but you'll still notice the edges still have that, I don't know, that kind of turn right there, each little edge. Not realistic, I'm gonna hit Control Z to fix that. The, I think the best modifier to do right here is to hit the, the, little, the little wrench, select add modifier, and then subdivision surface. This basically just breaks it down to smaller faces, and then under where it's viewport, make that two. I mean, you can make it a three to press apply for that modifier. You can also right click it and say shade smooth, and that gives us a very smooth sphere. The next step is to add material to this. Now that's relatively easy. There's, you know, there's no work in the shader editor. There's, there's no complicated work. You're just gonna press tab on your keyboard, brings you to edit mode, press U on the keyboard, which brings UV mapping. Go to sphere projection. What this does basically is it unwraps the UV vertices of the mesh over the curved surface of a sphere. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just a very simple, um, unwrapping and that unwraps it. I press tab again and we're going to press the material settings which is right here. Select new. Changes from the principal BSDF to diffuse. So roll it up a little bit. Diffuse BSDF. That's the, that's the kind of surface we're using. Under color with the dot. Select image texture and press that button. Now here's the thing. You could always go to Google and download a Mars unwrapped texture. Um, it looks kind of like this. You download it and you'll find it right here. Mars surface, and then we need to go to render view in order to see it. So let's press Z and 8 on the keyboard, and there we have we have the, the surface of Mars on the object. Didn't require much work, and here we are. I use this method all the time for just a simple uh, texture. Uh, you can easily just download and apply to your object. Now, um, obviously, we have a little bit of a couple things we don't want to change. Um, it's up to you, really, but this is what I'm going to do. Press R and move the polarized cap to right there. It's a little bit higher. Maybe just tip a little bit. But that is just to get the polarized cap a little bit higher up. And then let's go ahead and get our lighting in. So you can just hit the color all the way to black. Um, if you want to use an HDR image for the space background, definitely give that a shot. It's not really much different. You're just going to see this, you know, some stars in the background. So if that's what you're shooting for, definitely go for that. Now let's get the lighting set up. So basically right now it's more of a that angle. Select the light and go find your position. Um, we can move it down to here. And just keep changing it until you find the exact position you want your lighting in. I'm just using G on the keyboard to move it around a little bit. And might tip Mars over a little bit to, get, to emphasize the ice cap here. And once I've found a good positioning, I might even actually move it further back this way for the side profile. There we go, something like that. Now, once you found the good lighting and that kind of thing, go ahead and find the basic angle you want your camera in. For me, it's right here. Press Control, Alt, and Zero on the notepad, and that brings the camera right to where you are. That makes it really easy. So it's a nice little shortcut that I use all the time. I think we're good right here. If you want to make the, you know some final adjustments, press N on the keyboard, and where it says View, select Lock Camera to View, and from here it just lets you kind of orbit using basic orbiting techniques on your mouse, and the camera goes with you. So if you want to go really close or really far back, you know it works like that. Now the cool thing is the fact that this camera has some settings. So you can select the camera. And down here, with the camera tab, you can select your focal length, so you can go super far, you know, zoom way in and back the camera out. <laughs> That's very extreme, let's not go far, quite that far. So you can use just some, some very basic settings and um, find your exact location. Honestly, I like the idea of just being pulled back and zoomed in, because I think it just gives the, I don't know, it's a very cool look, I suppose. And you can kind of see me how zoomed in we are. If you look at this grid, it's really, um, yeah, we're, we're really far back. Now, um, looks like we're pretty much ready to render. So, if you're running on cycles, go ahead and um, use some of these settings I'm going to use. If you have GPU compute, 
use that. I'm just running on the CPU. So this is just a, um, a rendered picture. It's not like an animation, so 200 render samples is a good idea. Uh, keep your resolution at 100%, and it looks like we're ready to render. So I'm going to press render, render image. Now this is where Blender goes through and calculates all the lighting and shadows, all that stuff. So um, if you want to see the entire, the entire picture, you can just press shift home. That brings you the entire picture. And I will be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so let's just finish rendering. Um, it took me about six minutes to do this one, so not too bad. Now, normally you could just stop here and um, just save this image and just you know, keep it as normal. But there's just a little bit that's missing out of this. I feel like there needs to be more of a space feel in it. So go ahead and press image and save as image. And we're going to save this to a directory. The any directory is fine. Now, you, you don't want to accidentally, you know, after finish rendering, don't press the X button because if you do that, you lost the entire rendering. You have to save it first, then X out of it. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new, um, a new file. So hit, just hit general. All right, now we're going to go to the compositor and press N to close that. Press backdrop and use nodes. Delete the render layers node because we're not going to need this one. So X and delete that. Press Shift A and add in a an image. So under input, select image. Um, we're going to select open and you're going to find the picture that you rendered out. Um, here it is. Now use control shift and left click the node. That brings you to this background. Put the viewer node down here. Now press V to zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire photo. Now you can start putting nodes in to actually make your post. Now one thing I do want to let you know about is the fact that this composite node right here, this is the node that you actually render in. So in other words, this viewer node is what we're looking at right now. This is the viewer node. When we press the render button, it renders the composite node. So right now, if we were to render image, it would be black because there's nothing in the composite node. You can, you can actually see what it looks like. It's just black. There's nothing in the composite node. So go ahead and start importing nodes and we will connect them to the composite node later on. So the first node we're going to add in is a glare node. So press Shift A and our search. Search for glare. There it is. We're going to go ahead and put the glare node on the on the line here and we'll start messing with the bullet settings. So the first thing we're going to do is change from streaks to a fog glow and then we will increase the size to nine, take the threshold down to zero. It might take your computer, you know, just a couple seconds to, to, to actually load it in. But yeah, it creates kind of a bit of a glow here. Now, you can also add color filters in this, so press Shift A under search, just search the color, color balance node, and we just put that down right here. Now, this is where you can do a lot of settings here. This is just kind of your, your basic color of your shot. Um, for me, I don't think we're going to do much with this one, uh, but you could give it, you know, some kind of temperature to your shot, so let's let it load, and you would just drastically change your shot, and you can really do a lot with this, this is really endless, but you could, um, yeah, just kind of give this a shot and just see what you can do. The glare node is really the most you're going to do with the shot. Personally for me, I might give this a slight uh, yellow, from an orange texture just to really emphasize that, but I don't want to destroy all the glow here, so I'm going to keep that about there. Okay. Yeah, looks pretty good. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because the original glare is actually a more of a white color, but I want the glare to be more of a Mars color, so I'm actually going to make the first color a um, slight, a slight brown color and move the brightness down just a little bit. And yeah, that's the result I want right here. And so we're going to plug the image here into the image of the composite node. Like I said, this is the um, this is the render node basically. So yeah, make sure it's all connected up, and we're going to render render image now. Just keep these things the same. They're not really going to mess with this because this picture's already been rendered out, and this will not take nearly as long as the last one did. As a matter of fact, it'll just load in really quickly. Okay, here it is. And so you're going to press image and save as image, save it to your directory, and yeah, looks like you're all done. So this is what the shot looked like um, afterwards. So you can kind of get a feel from um, before post to after post. The, the after post really gives it more of a soft. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it just looks a lot, a lot more realistic. Well, that concludes this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe I'll learn something from it. And if you have any questions, throw it in the comments and I will try to answer you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching.